What's up you guys? It's Amanda. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a DIY custom print shirt. I'll be doing this using iron-on transfer paper in both a light and a dark top. And I'll walk you through step by step so that way you know the differences between light and dark transfer paper and you can use whatever's best for your project. So if you have any questions along the way, please leave them in the comment section below. I do try to get back to every single one of you guys. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with my dark top and this is from Bella Canvas, it's a flowy boxy tee and because I'm using this dark top and my design has the color white in it, I need to use dark fabric transfer paper. If you use a light one and your design has the color white in it, it's going to come out clear and the vibrancy of the colors may be lost if you don't use the dark fabric transfers, so it's important to know that. So to get started, you're going to need to choose a graphic, I'm going to open up Adobe Photoshop and I already made my graphic, it says blessed, it has a distressed, worn look to it. But I need to add a stroke to this image because it's going to be printed out on white paper. So I'll need to outline it so I can see where to cut it out. So we're just going to double click on the layer and then check the box on the left panel that says stroke. And if you'd like to make the stroke thicker, then click on the area next to the box and then it'll give you options to change the size. Make sure the position's on the outside, that way you don't distort your image. And now we're ready to print, but I do suggest that you print on regular paper first, just to make sure you've got the sizing and everything looks the way that you want it to, and that way you don't waste any of the transfer sheets. Now the most important thing to know when you're printing is that you need an inkjet printer. It can't be laser, and it has to be inkjet for this to work. To get the best image, I ended up choosing photo matte paper and I chose the best quality setting that it had. Then it's ready to print. Now one of the big differences with dark transfer paper is that you don't need to reflect the image, so it should look just as it appeared on your screen. And as you can see by adding the stroke, now I'm able to see where to cut it out. And that is our next step, is to cut out the graphic. And you can cut it out with just a regular pair of scissors or if you have an X-Acto knife and a lot of like little areas that you need to get to, you can use that as well. Now you do want to cut this out very meticulously because anything white is going to be transferred as white. And now that everything's cut out, we're going to prepare the surface and the shirt. You want to use a hard surface that's not sensitive to the heat and protect the surface with a pillowcase or a sheet. Then lay out your shirt and spread it out so that there's no wrinkles. If there is wrinkles, I'd suggest that you iron it out. I did not film this part, but I did do that. Then take your graphic cutout and peel off the back. Once you've peeled off the back, place the cutout on your shirt print side up. This is another big difference between light and dark transfer paper, is that with dark transfer paper, you iron it with the image facing up. Once you've placed it where you want it, then take one of the tissue papers that comes with the packet and set it on top of the transfer. Empty the water from your iron and make sure that the steam setting is off. And for the temperature, I set it to the highest setting for cotton. Now you can start ironing and make sure that you're applying a good amount of pressure and just moving the iron up and down, side to side, as evenly as possible. And according to the instructions, for a full sheet, you want to continue ironing for 2 minutes, half a sheet for 1 minute, and a fourth of a sheet for 40 seconds. So I iron mine for about 40 seconds, and then you just want to let it cool for 2 minutes. Once it's done cooling, you can peel off the tissue paper and it's complete. Alright, so that was all about iron-on transfer paper for dark fabric. Now let's move on to the next shirt where I'm going to use iron-on transfer paper for light fabric. Now the setup is the same, but we're going to use light fabric transfers this time. And the important thing to know is that anything white is going to be transferred as clear. To prepare your graphic, there is one main difference with the light transfer paper. It's that you need to flip your image so that it's mirrored. So go up to image and down to image rotation and then flip canvas horizontal. Now it's ready to print and I'm just going to follow the same exact settings that I did in the last example. Now we're going to cut it out. Now as a personal preference I still cut it out carefully because I don't want anything 
transparent or shiny I just want my design but if you don't cut out all of the white it will transfer as clear so if you're okay with that then you really don't have to worry about cutting it out so meticulously like I am once it's cut out since it is reversed we're gonna flip it over place it print side down and that's how we're gonna iron it then place it exactly where you want it and we're gonna use the same exact iron settings as the previous example so that's no seam and the highest cotton heat setting. Now the ironing time for the light transfer paper is a little bit longer than the dark. The instructions suggest that for a full page you iron for 3 minutes, half a page 90 seconds, and a fourth of a page 45 seconds. I ironed mine for about 60 seconds just to be safe. Then I let it cool for 2 minutes and then it's ready to peel the back off. So that completes the tutorial for the DIY custom shirt using dark and light transfer paper. Now really quickly I want to go over how to wash the shirts because I got that question a lot in my previous video. And the best way to wash the shirt without damaging the print is to wash it inside out on a cold cycle. So use cold water. When using a dryer, make sure that you have it on the lowest heat setting possible. And if you can hang dry it, that's even better. But you can tumble dry it. I've done it several times and it still holds up. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was pretty simple DIY once you know what you're doing. So hopefully you guys liked it and hopefully it helps you on your next project. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIYs. And if you have any questions, feedback, anything, please leave them in the comments below. I try to get back to every single one of you guys. I do go in there quite often, like on a daily basis. So thank you for coming to my channel and creating with me today. I encourage you guys to share what you've made with the world with me. Tag me in it. I'd love to see what you guys have made. And yeah, just keep creating. Odds are, if you're on my channel right now, if you're watching my video, you're a creator and you have something very special to share with the world. And I'm not just saying that. That's something that I truly believe. Like deep down to my core, I know every single person on this planet has something special to share with the world. So just keep creating, keep sharing, and I'm wishing you guys the best and that you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.